Additionally, Ms. Navaroli, are you familiar with the account Libs of TikTok? I have heard of it from the news, yes. Um, Mr. Roth, are you familiar with this account? Yes, ma'am, I am. Are you aware from, that from August 11th to August 16th, that account posted false information about Boston Children's Hospital, claiming that they were providing hysterectomies to children? Yes, I am aware of that and other claims from the account. And are you aware that this lie was then circulated by other prominent far-right influencers? Yes. And are you aware that all these claims, uh, which I have reiterated, were false, culminated in a real-life harassment and ultimately a bomb threat to the Boston Children's Hospital? Yes, I am aware. And this account is still on that platform today, isn't it? Regrettably, yes, it is. Despite inspiring a bomb threat due to the right-wing incitement of violence against trans Americans in this country, because they cannot let go of this obsession with fixating violence and inciting violence against trans and LGBT people, in addition to immigrants, in addition to women of color. This is a party that cannot pick on anyone their own size. And they are trying to co-opt an entire social media platform and use the power of this committee and of Congress in order to pursue a political agenda. I yield back. You just watched Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez forcefully condemn the GOP's dangerous obsession with LGBTQ plus people, namely trans people. And this took place at yesterday's House Oversight Committee hearing on the censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story by Twitter. And I'm very thankful that AOC used this opportunity to spotlight the incitement of violence that consistently takes place against this marginalized community. Now, she pointed out that this party cannot pick on anyone their own size, and she says that their obsession and their fixation on violence and inciting violence is something that they cannot let go of. Now, you and I know why the right does this. It's a propaganda tactic. They're trying to distract you from their deficiencies as a party, distract you from the fact that they don't represent working class people. They only represent the billionaires. So they try to raise the salience of other things that they claim are issues in order to get you to pay attention to that as opposed to their own duplicitous behavior. But either way, regardless of their motives, the outcome is absolutely dangerous. And AOC is right to bring up libs of TikTok. Now, we'll get to the specifics there, but this is an account that was inadvertently revealed by Barry Weiss through the Twitter files to be protected on Twitter. You don't get special protection. I don't get special protection. But because of the Twitter files, they inadvertently revealed that this far-right account that incites violence against children's hospitals cannot be banned unless it's escalated to higher-ups at Twitter. So, the right, not only is there not a bias against them on Twitter, but they get special treatment oftentimes, as was the case with Trump, which was another thing that was revealed at this hearing. Now, let's get to what AOC is talking about here. I've discussed this on the program, but Libs of TikTok quite literally is a stochastic terrorist that has incited violence on numerous occasions. LGBTQ Nation explains on August 11th, Chaya Rychik, this is the owner of the Libs of TikTok account, reposted about 13 tweets and a right-wing expose claiming that the Boston Children's Hospital in Massachusetts was conducting gender affirming surgery on children as young as two or three years old and performing hysterectomies for young girls as part of their gender affirming care program. The fact checking site PolitiFact later debunked the claims, but physicians at the hospitals received so many death threats, harassing calls and emails that the hospital had to hire extra security and give doctors new guidance on responding to threats. The misinformation campaign also led to multiple bomb threats. Rychik has used her account to accuse teachers, parents, activists, and doctors of sexualizing kids through LGBTQ plus media, content, drag queen performances, and gender-affirming medical care for transgender youth. Her posts have led to death threats against medical professionals and veterinarians, armed protesters at drag events, and the harassment and firing of LGBTQ plus allied teachers. Anti-LGBTQ plus politicians and activists have falsely claimed that medical providers are giving irreversible treatments to trans children. However, in reality, young children are only encouraged 
encouraged by medical professionals to continue exploring their gender. Pubescent children are given puberty blockers to give them time to stave off further biological changes while they decide on their future course of treatment. Now, this is treatment that is recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Medical Association, and it is all deemed medically necessary because to deny gender affirming care to trans youth leads to greater risk of suicide. So this is not a new phenomenon. This has been the go-to procedure now, although there's still being additional uh, studies being conducted, but the way that doctors deal with trans patients who are very young, but the right wing has been trying to fearmonger about this. Now we're talking about libs of TikTok and propagandists oftentimes who elevate the salience of these issues, but I need you to understand that all of this propaganda, this incitement of violence isn't taking place in a vacuum. It is encouraging lawmakers across the country to take action. Now, what are we? We're at February 9th. We're just into 2023 and over a hundred bills have already been proposed. A hundred anti-trans bills, anti-LGBTQ plus bills, I should say, that are disproportionately anti-trans. And Again, we're like a month, not even a month and a half into the new year. So this has become the go-to issue for a lot of Republicans and lawmakers are standing idly by as it happens. But thankfully, AOC shined a spotlight on this phenomenon. Now, the rhetoric with regard to trans people, it's not just discriminatory, right? We're not just talking about bigots saying bigoted things. The rhetoric has very quickly become genocidal and violent. And that's demonstrated by libs of TikTok, but also your run-of-the-mill right-wing propagandists. So let me just play a quick compilation that I put together of some of the anti-trans segments produced by right-wing media just from this last week. So I'm just going to come right out and say this because it needs to be said. I have a, such great contempt for trans individuals and everything that they are doing right now in our society. Uh, I, to me, I've yet to meet a trans person that I thought was a good individual. Go ahead, you can use that clip verbatim, circulate it, George Soros and your goons, because somebody needs to say it. This has gone on far enough, right? You know, he, he says that, oh, well, we're gonna, I wanna flee the country. Well, if, if he himself flees, um, and, and he's doing that you know, in part in response to some of the laws that, were, that, that are being passed around the country, then I consider that another great benefit of those laws. Trump also says, uh, as he goes on to say, that, the, that he would direct the Department of Justice to investigate hospitals, pharmaceutical companies, uh, doctors, to find out if they've been involved in a cover-up of the horrific long-term side effects uh, and, uh, of gender transition drugs and surgeries. And the answer, of course, is that, yes, they have been covering those things up as any genuine and thorough investigation will clearly show, which is why the next step under a Trump administration or any Republican administration should be to arrest the culprits, the um, hundreds and hundreds of them, if not thousands of them, and throw them in federal prison. Now, this can't be a matter of simple fines and financial penalties. I mean, that should be part of it. But uh, the only real recourse here, the only semblance of justice would be prison sentences, very long ones. Now, if it were up to me, we, you know, we'd go further than that. As far as I'm concerned, mutilating and castrating children should be legally considered a capital crime and it should earn the prescribed penalty for such crimes. But if we can't have that, then prison will have to suffice. So Matt Walsh states there he wants trans people to flee the country as a result of anti-trans laws. And he believes that doctors who provide medically necessary, mind you, gender affirming care to trans youth should be executed. Candace Owens said, um, she has great contempt for trans people. I mean, imagine admitting this about an entire group of people. Substitute trans for any other community. Imagine if a pundit got on the air and said, I have great contempt for Jewish people or black people or gay people. It wouldn't fly. But because these propagandists have been so effective at cultivating this toxic environment, they've actually taken us backwards to where any social gains made by trans people over the course of the last five years have been erased like that, all because the GOP poured all their effort into this campaign to demonize trans people. And to see a lawmaker actually come out and say what's going on and incitement of violence and obsession, that is really, really powerful. Because, I mean, I see all of this, uh, all of this take place. I talk about it all the time. It makes me feel like I'm going crazy. Like, we're all just sitting idly by 
as a genocide is being attempted and called for against an entire group of people, and we're just going on with our daily lives as if this isn't actually happening. The situation is absolutely critical currently. So in 2021, violence against trans and non-binary people reached a record high with 50 murders. And in 2022, 34 more trans and non-binary people were murdered. And of course, most of them were black and brown trans women. These are human beings with hopes, dreams, ambitions, the capacity to feel pain just like you and I, and their lives were snuffed out. They're never coming back. These are human beings we're talking about here. And a Williams Institute study found that trans people are over four times more likely to be victims of violent crime compared to their cis peers. So we are at a breaking point. This is a pivotal moment to where we need all hands on deck. We need the Democratic Party to forcefully condemn what is happening currently. Again, these propaganda bullshit artists like Matt Walsh and Candace Owens, they're always going to say bigoted things. But the bigotry that they espouse is not occurring in a vacuum. It is leading to legislation. Today, Matt Walsh, he testified before the Tennessee legislature. They are putting their bigotry into action. Why is their urgency to demonize trans people seemingly stronger than the urgency to save trans people's lives from supposed allies? Why hasn't the Democratic Party, why hasn't media done more to elevate the salience of this problem? This is why there's this disconnect and why things continue to get worse. Because small YouTubers like myself, our reach only goes so far, right? My platform is only that big. I mean, I can't really penetrate the mainstream by saying this. But MSNBC can, CNN can. Democrats absolutely can shift the salience of this issue so people know what's happening under their nose. We are literally in a system that is currently trying to propagate an attempted genocide against an entire group of human beings who simply just want to exist. And we're all just pretending as if this isn't actually a thing. Where's the urgency? So seeing AOC talk about this was really encouraging. Because, again, I feel like I'm going crazy. Is nobody else seeing what's happening here? Is nobody else concerned? If it can happen to trans people, it can happen to other marginalized groups. So understand that we've got to take action. We need to be there when they show up in legislatures to testify in favor of anti-trans legislation. We need to be there counter-protesting when they show up to protest some pride event or pressure lawmakers to take action against trans people like we have to at least meet them with regard to urgency because the situation is getting dire and we're at a turning point where it feels like we've already crossed the rubicon but to the point that we can still protect trans people now is the time to take action